in Jefferson County. That's the one he's pleading true to on these. The aggravated assault on a peace officer is the one we're going to have to try. Okay. So we're just going to plead on one of these because that's actually the same offense going through two different counties on five and six. So I'm okay. on six. We now call. Everybody ready? Clause number 21 37687. The state of Texas versus Tony. Uh, Tony, is it Tyrell Duhon? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The defendant is present with Ms. Mantle, his fine attorney and the state's attorney. Does the defendant waive a formal reading of this first amended motion to revoke probation, which was filed June 16th of this year? Can we proceed in summary? Yes, sir. And Mr. Duhon, raise your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony that you were about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. Lower your hand. In summary, this motion states that on, and it's a first amended motion to revoke probation, states that on January 19th, 2022, that would have been going on two years, almost two years ago, that you were sentenced to 10 years in prison, probated for 10 years for evading detention with a motor vehicle, which was a, a third degree felony. Do you, uh, is all of that true and correct? That, yes, is, that's that. true. You, you were sentenced to 10 years, then that was suspended and you were placed on 10 years probation. Yes, Number five. Number six, we're going to do six. Number six, yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> number six allegation states you committed the offense of evading arrest or detention with a motor vehicle on or about April 14th, 2023, in Jefferson County, Texas, in violation of your probation order. Is that true or untrue? Yes, sir. True. Are you pleading true to that allegation yes, voluntarily? And because it is true as it is alleged. Yes, sir. Do you understand by a knowing and voluntary plea of truth to a one or more violations of probation? That is enough to grant the motion to revoke probation. Your probation can now be revoked. You can be sentenced to no less than two nor more than 10 years confinement in prison. Yes, sir. Knowing that, do you insist on pleading true today? Yes, sir. I find you were pleading true voluntarily. Do you understand and appreciate the consequences of pleading true? Yes, sir. Is there a need to go to any others? No. Okay. I, I do want to hear from the probation office a summary of um, uh, other, uh, notwithstanding violation allegation six. What else can you tell me about? Mr. Duhon's time here. Yes, sir. There's no deal on this, right? Correct. Okay. Mr. Duhon was placed on probation in January of last year. Since being placed on probation, he reported to the office a total of nine times, which ended September 6th of 2022. Since then, he has not reported in person to the department. Since when? September of last year. Of 2022? Yes, sir. He's been a goner. Or he's yes, been sir, absconded? He absconded. And how long have you been in jail? I was in April. It's in April. Yes, November through April. So, um, did you ever? Did he ever try to explain that? No, not to me, Your Honor. Well, excuse me while I eat breakfast and lunch here. That's it's been a very hectic day. Now I'm eating popcorn. January did. Um, you're really not on probation if you're not touching base with us and supervised. Yes, I mean, it's really not. It's a. It's a. It's kind of a joke, uh, and it, it's not actually supervision, which it's futile for us to have a probation office. You know, you know, exactly. you have to touch base all the time, and we keep you. Not only are we keeping an eye on you. We're reminding you about all the rules and the consequences of breaking the rules. And the problem here is you're on probation for evading detention with a motor vehicle. And so what do you do? You go out and commit another crime as though you're not contrite about the first mistake. 
And the law provides that these are third degree felonies because when you're evading, if you're, you know, I don't know if you were in one session with a motor vehicle, you know, we're talking about cases here that it's not unusual for us to have people in fatally injured, seriously injured in car crashes because they uh, happen to get hit by vehicles that are involved in fleeing from an officer. It's very dangerous. And it, it, you make me sick. It, it really haunts us all for the rest of our lives. It haunts us to hear the lamentations of people who go, we were just following the rules. We were minding our own business. And then this car comes out of nowhere at 120 miles an hour and kills a bunch of people. So what happens? And then you go, well, what can you do about that? You can't undo it. We can't go back in time. But you had to have recognized how important it was the first time we made a big deal about it and been placed you on regular probation um, because of the serious nature of all of, uh, of this type of offense. Do you happen to have a pre-sentence report I can look at really quick? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. I, I'm not surprised what I'm reading here. In your criminal history, in the misdemeanor part, for example, you've got an assault. How old are you right now? Better boss. You know, nothing to know better, but back 15 years ago, uh, um, 18 years ago, uh, actually 16 years ago, uh, you committed the offense of assault, and that was uh, a misdemeanor conviction. Failure to identify in 08, that was a conviction. Trespassing in 08, that was a conviction. Family assault, and that was in 2010, that was a fine. But here's what I'm leading up to, evading arrest or detention in 2015 and 60 days in jail. So, you know, we're serious about that. You know, 60 days in jail, but you go back and you commit in 2021, evading detention with a motor vehicle and then sent us to 10 years. We made a deal, bigger deal about it. 10 years in prison, probated for 10 years last year. And so now you picked up a third evading with, and this one's second one with them with a uh, uh, motor vehicle. But I'm not even including these uh, these failures to appear, contempt of court, traffic offenses, violation of school compulsory law, possession of drug paraphernalia. I mean, all of those are just all things that just show, hey, uh, it's, I, I don't take this seriously. And you have to, like I have to, we all, so that we can all live together on this increasingly small planet peacefully and enjoy what our dreams are. But here you are, is back before me for the same offense, third time. And this could have been so much, such a catastrophe. They stop you for expired registration. See, you're not even driving a vehicle with the proper procedure. Everybody else has to pay for inspection stickers and registration, but you're... you're and because it's a privilege there you look in the constitution what that flag stands for you won't find you have a right to drive a car you won't find it in there because it's a privilege it's not a right you are the worst human being i have ever met but you got to pay for the privilege like everybody else does or 
the cost of of the roadways and the maintenance, the security, so that we can all enjoy it together. So you were asked to step out of the vehicle. You refused. You refused. Fled, and as you fled, you ran over the police car, the police officer's foot. <laughs> My God. That's the one that we're not reading on at this particular hearing. Um, but. Okay. Okay. He does, but but the next sentence completes the thought. A vehicle pursuit ensued through Port Arthur and continued in and through the city limits of Beaumont and on to Chambers County. So I'm sorry, but this was Eighth Avenue in Port Arthur that this happened, not Chambers County. This is Jefferson. This is the one he pled to. But if even if he didn't. The, he, this was a, a series of acts that began in one county and ended in another county, so they're connected. I mean, isn't that true? Seven, this is eight. This is seven, what we're talking about: Port Arthur, Texas, that seven, you pleaded true to here in number six in Jefferson seven, County seven, on April fourteenth. He received medical treatment. Well, well, this doesn't look good, obviously. I mean, not only did you do the third thing wrong that we'd already sanctioned you for three times, but you ran over, the, you, you injured a police officer. My goodness. I didn't, I didn't do it. It's, it's on the video. It clearly showed that I didn't do it. Are you kidding me? He is maintaining that he doesn't believe that he ran over the officer's foot. I see. All right. I seen the video. Oh, you did. Oh, you kidding me? He didn't have an injury on okay. his foot at all. <laughs> all right. Let's walk it back. Let's say you didn't dry over. What are you doing? Leaving the scene and running from the police? He's a fucking idiot. Do you have any excuse for that? No, sir. All right. It's a crime. It's a, it's a crime. My goodness, it's a it's a felony <clears throat> on my watch. After you had gone a wall on us, that again is something that the court doesn't find amusing. We have five thousand probationers. We can't look, go and find you and ask you polite. Please come back. You have a responsibility that you signed off. You made a promise to me. Let's see. Here's your signature, Tony. I've received a copy of this order. I agree to follow all conditions imposed. I know that this probation can be revoked, revoked for any violation. You know how important it was. Oh. So, what do we do? What a stupid question that is. What a stupid question. What's the defense asking for? Now, we're asking, first of all, he would like to uh, have the opportunity to stay on probation. And um, even though he, he realizes he's facing the, the, at least the one felony and a second one that he's contesting so far, but he would like the opportunity. You know, to that stay other on. one in Chambers County, I can't, uh, I, I wouldn't. No. Uh, I, I don't think they're going to pursue that. I know it's, it's, it's in the same wrapped up in the same transaction yes, so the law states so we can only is it's one continuous act so it's going to be charged one time so and just be the one evading but we're all clear there, it happened here the, in jefferson county there's the aggravated here in port arthur aggravated assault on a peace officer my old bird place and so we've got a we're involved here deeply in the safety of our county Yes, sir. Um, and if the court were not inclined to allow him to stay on probation, uh, then we would ask that you consider something that may be on the lower end of the punishment scale, the two to ten, 
Um, he still is facing the aggravated assault case. And, um, you know, depending on how that comes out, it may affect the length of his time that he might be sentenced today. And um, did you have anything that you wanted to add on your behalf of why they would leave you on probation? Yes. What about that probation, the aggravated assault probation? No, it's a new case. No, there's a new case, aggravated assault. Oh, there's okay. a family violence and this that's evading family detention. Violence. Right. What about that? It's it's we filed a motion in it too. I thought yeah. it's it's are we dealing with that today? Yes, sir. It's it's oh, okay. it's right there underneath your filing seat. I think it's or it's there somewhere. Right here. Well, They're both ten over ten, we, both thirty. Let, why don't we go over that one too? We'll hold this one in abeyance and go to twenty one three seven six eight eight. And again, you were still under oath. And does the defendant waive a formal reading of this first amended motion to revoke probation? Can we proceed in summary here? Yes, sir. In summary, sir, this motion states that on January 19th, 2022, the same date as the other probation evading detention that we've already dealt with here earlier, that you um, pleaded guilty and were sentenced to 10 years in prison, probated for 10 years for assault family violence. Is that true? Yes, sir. And it's the same. Number six is alleged here that you committed the offense of evading arrest or detention with a motor vehicle on or about April 14th, 2023 in Jefferson County, Texas, in violation uh, number one, that you had signed off on, on that probation order, don't commit another crime, and you violated that condition of probation. Is all of that true as it is alleged? Yes, sir. Are you pleading true voluntarily and because it is true? Yes, sir. You understand by pleading true that is enough? Yes, sir. One or more violations are enough to grant uh, this motion to revoke probation, the first admitted motion to revoke probation, as I would find by a preponderance of the evidence, there is enough evidence to do so. Your probation can be revoked and you can be sentenced as the other case, no less than two, no more than 10 years confinement in prison. Knowing that, do you insist on pleading true today? I do. I find you're pleading true voluntarily. Do you understand and appreciate the consequences of pleading true? Yes, sir. Anything else? Uh, you just, have? just further, we would ask the court. What is your envision of how this should proceed? Um, first, did you want to address the court uh, about if he were willing to let you stay on probation, what your plans are? Yes, ma'am. Well, before, um, well, first off, I have sympathy for the officer if I did, you know, uh, injure him. And uh, second, I was really doing good. Uh, my mom passed like September 25th, 2022, and I took in my sister. She's 14 years old. And that day, I just I just made a stupid mistake. I, I was doing good. I was working, and I just had a lot of stuff to take care of after my mom passed. So I just stopped reporting. I really don't had no excuse. I just. And what was it that what was it that you're saying that happened that kept you from being able to complete your probation requirements? I just had a lot going on. I, I didn't really have the excuse. Like I said, my mom passed. I was trying to get funeral arrangements going. It was it was a lot. And then when I called up the well, when did your mother pass? September twenty fifth of what year? Twenty twenty two. A year ago, last year. Yes, sir. Okay. Keep going. No. Like I said, I was on the right track. I was. Just, I did day. I just made a stupid mistake. I knew. I, I knew I had a. Uh, I knew I had a warrant for my arrest, and I, I just ran. I should have just a warrant stayed. for what? For the uh, MTRP. The MTRP. Yeah. Yeah. God bless you. So, mm -hmm. what you're saying is that you chose committing another crime, fleeing to avoid answering to another violation yes, that sir. was being alleged. Yes, sir. That's facing your responsibilities in a <clears throat> proper fashion? No, sir. no, it's not. 
That's why it's a crime. Because that's not the way you're supposed to handle issues. Right. All you did is you turned one problem into two. Yeah, I made it worse. Yeah, you threw gas on the fire. But there's but you knew it was nobody ever runs forever. They know who you where you are ultimately, even if you were able to escape, you're gonna get caught. Yeah. I, know. I mean it's inevitable. I just can't. I'm not, I don't know. I, that happens a lot. I just, I have to face the issues. I just, it would bother my conscience to death if it was, I wonder if somebody's going to walk up my door one day with a cert, with an arrest warrant for this. I'm not going to wait. I'm going to meet it head on and deal with it responsibly. Yes. But you've been through this before. Yeah. Um, you know how to handle it right versus wrong, but you keep doing it the wrong way. What states? Judge, this wasn't just a stupid mistake. This was, I mean, they clocked him at some points up to 105 miles per hour. He lost a tire, was riding on the rim. They tried to throw out spikes to stop him. He just kept going around everything. And they finally had to actually crash into him with another vehicle to get him to stop. Is that and all that true? So we would we would ask for the 10 years. I, he just He's going to hurt somebody, and he needs to know that this is extremely serious. What would you like to say, sir? Um, the only thing I'm I'm guilty of is evading, but I do understand mm. if God bless you. That's me, not what you're only guilty of. No, for. by me, I'm saying by me running, I know I caused the police officer to, to get injured and stuff like I could have hurt a lot of people. But you, but you I, put every we were lucky. They were lucky, not because of you, but the good Lord was shining on and keeping an eye on the people because the 108 miles an hour does a lot of damage to people when it, you get hit by a car. You can't. I mean, that's why speed limits are no more than, I think, 80 in, in the in the country. I don't think there's a, one higher than that, which is awfully fast. But still, vehicles don't operate or weren't met. Most vehicles weren't met to operate safely. Near, at anywhere near 100 miles an hour. Anything else? Uh, again, I just ask the court to maybe consider holding the motions in abeyance, and um, he still has this felony to deal with. And then after he's done with that, maybe then it might make a difference on the rest of his probation. Otherwise, if the court's going to revoke his probation, we would ask for something. I don't believe the injuries, the assault family violence was definitely an assault family violence, but I don't think they were severe injuries. And I'm not sure about the evading. Was there a chase in that one? Did anybody get injured in that one? And so we would suggest that perhaps the, uh, the underlying facts on those two original offenses that he's on probation for don't warrant a full 10 year sentence. Here's the deal is your actions speak louder than your words because you promised me when you were placed on both of these probations that you wouldn't do something like this again, really. Because number one was committing a crime and you know it's a crime. We made a big deal about it last time. It's a felony offense. So you went right back and did it. signed off you made a deal that it didn't take long before you broke with the same crime if nothing further i'm going to find in each of these two cases and this is 21 37687 and 37688 the first amended motions to revoke probation uh, shall be granted by a preponderance of the evidence or greater as allegation six has been proven true as the defendant has voluntarily and knowingly uh, admitted to uh, condition one violation in each probation, and that is committing the crime, the same crime. He is on probation uh, for in 37687, the same type of crime, evading arrest or detention with a motor vehicle, which are serious third degree felonies. In each of these cases, sir, your probation is revoked and you are now hereby sentenced to confinement in the institutional division of the texas department of criminal justice to serve a term of 10 years on each case to run concurrently 
to you, sir, I say goodbye. You put this cord in the, into a corner that it, it that you have a problem with, and that is committing the same serious offense, and it just gets worse with a motor irresponsible behavior with a motor vehicle and with law enforcement. The rules don't seem to apply to you. But they they do, but you you don't accept them. And we must pay a price at this stage for continuously putting yourself and others in harm's way. And again, these 10-year sentences shall run concurrently. Uh, before uh, he's released back to the jail, may I have a few minutes to speak with him about the third case? What number is that? That's uh, CR 3474. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, you can okay. talk and whatever you need to. David, you ready? Yes, sir. Come on.